Hello there, this is Jason Eagle, your natural health authority with the Healing Matters um, uh, podcast. <laughs> Sorry, a little distracted here. But so anyways, today is we're going to talk about water types. We talk a lot about water. Water seems like a very simple thing and, and it seems like even I have kind of caught myself, which is, I just drink more water. Well, you know, a lot of times that's for many people that's the answer but um, then we get into the other thing well what well, water okay what type of water are we drinking well let's break it down in terms of what most people have most you know people have we have sink water then we have bottled water you can buy the water you can get the water free all this other stuff you can get the water out of the sink and do something to the water or not do something to the water and so let me let me go through and we'll start with those different kind of categories about what what water is Okay, so again, like most people is, what are you talking about? Like you turn the sink on and you, you know, well, yes, there's the water that you get from your, say, city water or your well water or something like that in your house. You turn the spigot on, okay? Well, there's different things that you wash your dishes, you wash your clothes, you do all that, you take showers, and then you cook and then you drink. And so, you know, there's a difference there literally can be people have I have this type of water for this type of stuff and I have this type of water for this type of stuff we for instance we have we live on a, a piece of property where we have a well which means we're pulling up deep water and it's very mineralized water and so the water goes through the pipes and some of the water goes almost all of the water goes through um, a water softener which is there's the special salt that you put in there and that removes a lot of the hard um, minerals because those are the things that will stain you know make that orange water or make that the orange sink ring or tub ring or something like that so that minimizes that and the, also the reason why is because when you wash clothes and wash you know um, say dishes you know those old commercials that that's what makes the water stains and stuff like that so many people when they live on a well they ha have it go through a water softener but then we also have a separate spigot where you can turn it on and it's water that's coming straight from the well. So that's that's deep well water that we then pass through a just a Brita type of filter. You know, one of these on the counter type of thing. You can buy any kind of grocery store and it's the, the big one where... So what we drink and what we cook with is well water that has been passed through some filters, especially charcoal filters and stuff like that. It's not to remove fluoride because there's no fluoride in there. There's none of that. But there is some, lots of heavy metals and and not not necessarily heavy metals. There's a lot of everything in it. So a good carbon filter makes it taste better and it cleans it up a little bit. Okay. So the same thing would be true if a person, let's say, is lives in a house where they get city water. Now city water is the water that goes from your pipes and it goes it's your toilet and, and it's the shower and it's everything and all of that goes through the pipes and goes to the water treatment center and so it is water it's poop water essentially as well as everything else and chemicals and and all the drugs that people urinate and and but also pour down the sink and stuff like that so there's lots as to all the washing detergents and stuff like that so that's why at the water treatment facility, what they do is they put, they filter stuff out and then they, they um, put stuff in and they put fluoride in and chlorine and different cities have different types of levels in terms of, you know, some cities you'll smell it and you're like, oh my gosh, like I can totally smell like chlorine. And so many people have just gotten used to it. Grandma and grandpa have gotten used to it. They don't, you know, um, they don't know the difference. But um, so what... Uh, and again, what's the what's the difference? Okay, you really don't want fluoride. Um, that's really been disproven in, a, in terms of strengthening the teeth. It does strengthen the teeth, but what it does is it makes them less porous and it makes them um, more brittle. And so the theory is is that the less porous, meaning not as much pockmark holes. It's the same thing as that like toothpaste that you sensitivity toothpaste, which is. The reason they say that the reason your tooth is so sensitive is because your holes, like your teeth, if you look on a microscope, it looks like a pumice stone, which is it's got holes in it. And so the temperature and water is able, and so that when you lose some of the enamel, you get deeper pockmark type of holes on a micro level. And so that's where the cold, so they, they give you this toothpaste stuff, which is it literally is these minerals and it will just fill these things up and it fills these holes up. Well, 
Um, and on a level, that's what it does, the fluoride does to the teeth. But what that does is it then makes it more dependent upon being clean because it can't clean itself. A good healthy immune system, the tooth cleans itself because there's a fluid flow of where the teeth, this is getting deep, this is all about tooth decay and stuff like that, but uh, you know, it's really shown, which is when a person loses minerals, what happens is, is instead of the tooth itself, which we think is a dead tissue, it has a root and set, but it's not. It has this quote, what's called crevicular fluid. It has through these mini little tubules of that porous stone. When a tooth is alive, it actually and it's healthy. What's happening is, is it's squirting juices outside of the tooth, which means if the faucet's going that way, nothing can go into the tooth and nothing can. That's why you have people, especially from a lot of third world countries, have just a full mouth and never been to the dentist and they got great teeth. It's because they have a lot of stored minerals. Minerals They still eat the old way where they eat the, the old foods and they cook those old ways, which means they have much, much better diet. And they keep their teeth because the flow of this fluid is out. Now, when a person starts to get sick and starts in the gut and stuff like that, and, and because they've been poisoned and where they live and a lot of the water, what I'm getting to is a lot of the city water, this is a poison. Um, what happens is, is then the immune system starts to retract, which means it starts to pull that fluid into the tooth. And so now the tooth, instead of pushing out, it's pulling in. And so the tooth actually starts to be like a sponge and absorb the bacteria that it's sitting in, which it was always sitting in, and even including the sugar and stuff like that that grows tooth decay. However, now it's being sucked into the tooth. Before it couldn't get on in you know on land, it couldn't get in the border. It was stuck out in the harbor, but now it gets in and it gets infiltrated. So, really, the deep secret is yes, dental you know dentists are important, but really the healthy people that have really the right amount of minerals is uh, and you're healthy enough, then the tooth actually can regrow and the tooth stays um, strong. And so even. For instance, having fluoride. Fluoride was put in because ah, the people are so poor and stupid they can't take care of their own teeth. And so let's just put this in here. Okay, well, you want fluoride to come out. And so you can get a, say, filter, like the Brita filter, an RO filter, which is called reverse osmosis. Reverse osmosis is essentially passing water through multiple what's called membranes. In a membrane, it's kind of like a screen, but it's not really a screen. And what it does is it goes this layer, this layer, this layer, and it's pulling minerals and it basically it's a sieve. And so it's leaving you with very, very clean water, almost like distilled where it doesn't have a, a lot of minerals in it, but it's not the same thing as distilled. We'll get into that. So, or passing it through um, a gravity one and, and, you know, that's the Brita filter or in the, you know, in the prepper world. And in fact, if you really want to be true, the, the, um, what's called a Berkey filter, they're expensive, but those make the, those are the ones that you can literally go out and take pond water, dirty pond water, and pour it through that thing and drink it on the other side. They have these ceramic type of filters and stuff like that. Those are a good thing to have. And even you go to a camping store and you can get one of these things that's a pump where you can literally go to a stream and, or even a swamp where it's like, that'll kill you if you don't boil it. You can pull it through this filter and it filters all those particles out and it's drinkable. You know, um, taking water from a lake or a spring or something like that, um, usually having to boil it. If you boil it, then you, it's clean water. And we'll talk about that later in terms of levels of spring water and stuff like that. We'll start with what most people know, which is, is the uh, city water. Now, there's also what you say. I know people who have a filter that's put on. They live in the city, but they don't want to just filter this out of their drinking water. They also want to filter it out of their bath water, their shower water. So there's a couple ways. There's a whole house filter that can really clean that stuff up. Or you can put a filter that goes right on your shower thing. And so when you take a shower, it's going through these little same type of little Brita filters. And, um, and really the water that you shower your body with, you don't smell the chemicals anymore and stuff like that. So if you do have city water, that's what I recommend, is that you have some sort of filtration system. And it's true even, I know people who have lots of, you know, I've treated over the years who have lots of what you call autoimmune problems, and they have to do that for their laundry, meaning the city water and wearing their clothes, you know, it's not just enough to have the, the uh, hypoallergenic, non-scent, unscented type of, let's say, um, laundry, deter laundry detergent like the Arm & Hammer or the Borax, that's the cleanest of the cleanest and it literally is doesn't leave any chemical residues because it doesn't have that in it. However, I've known people where it's, it's the water that they're washing it in so there's a filter that you can 
put on in like the tube where it comes into your washing machine, both the hot and cold. Okay, you want to be serious about that. That again is because a poison is a poison, and the chlorine. Yes, they clean the water. So the answer is is really, you know, get a well, right? Um, and so that's the next level. You got people that live outside of the city in terms of, of, you know, they live on a piece of property where they have to put a well, and then they have to have their own septic tank, and so. What they're drinking is, is always fresh water. It's always recycled water. However, there is lots of minerals in certain places. And truth be told, many people who are just drinking their sink water from their own well without it being treated uh, is one of the leading causes of kidney stones and gallstones and stuff like that. Especially if they're like grandma or grandpa and they're taking their geritol, which has you know calcium in it. And they're also taking, oh, I heard I need to take calcium for my bones. They can literally take so much calcium in their water, in other minerals, and it can literally solidify their bones. And so, um, again, just because it's well water doesn't mean it's the greatest water in the world. It still needs to be treated to get the parts per million of water, of minerals in the water at the right level. Too much will start to jam you up, okay? So that's another range why where people who live in the city or do live in out there, they buy their water. They have a water delivery system. So we now get into, like, say, Absopure or, or going to the grocery store and doing your own bottled water, something like that. When you look at, like, I don't care what type of water it is, is you know, uh, Ice Mountain or whatever, when you look at what it says is most of them are just municipal city they're taking they're just turning the hose on from city water and cleaning it up a little bit and sticking in a bottle and selling it back to you now i don't know about you sometimes i can really taste the plastic in it when my wife and i were just driving drove down to uh, tennessee and you know stop at a gas station and buy a gallon of water to fill it up or something we had to go through one whole gallon it was like yeah that really tastes like plastic you don't know how long it's been and there's so there's more expensive levers uh, uh, layers of plastic and more cheaper so, but again, you know, glass is uh, uh, in the water world, anything that's in a glass. I know a lot of people that were so sensitive, they couldn't do the plastics, even if it said it was like BPA free. So they put water in, for instance, glass bottles or in uh, metal bottles, whether it be stainless steel, the, the Berkey filter is a stainless steel. Um, we can later, I'm going to get later into is things that you can do to water by putting them in different metal cups, copper, silver, gold things you can structure water and really clean water in fact that was uh, if you go back to the water that was in the temple of uh, including the Solomon's temple or the, the the Jewish temple is they had these big water urns that the priests used to wash their hands and drink out of um, when they were you know doing the sacrifice and stuff like that because one of the and they would drink it and put their over their bodies because in, in metal, when you put really good clean water and you can put re, like a distilled water, like a, a sun evaporated seawater that you make your own distilled water, which is a pure water, you can put that inside of a metal vessel. So especially like a, a um, copper is one way to do it because what it will do it is the, the water will grab onto what's called colloidals. And it will put tiny, tiny particles of copper into the water. So people drinking these, you know, these, the, you know, Moscow mules out of like a, a, you know, that's a drink. But you can, I know people who have these bottles who drink it out of copper because copper is anti, silver and gold are antimicrobial, antibacterial. So it's literally like treating it for any type of viruses. Plus, like for instance, and it's what it's doing, it's putting colloidal silver or colloidal copper or colloidal gold or even if you let it sit long enough and you even do some things like, for instance, the singing bowl type of stuff, you can get a gold singing bowl, get real high level stuff. So, you know, that was later, I didn't think I was talk, talk about it, but once I got into it, I'm going to stick with it. So you can literally structure water with gold and get gold and silver or copper to what's create what's called monatomics. And monatomics is the very, very small, 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 because if you understand what our cells are, as our cells are these electromagnetic field type of thing. And... The, the like in good stereo equipment the in computer equipment what you plug one thing into another thing is just the best the highest level would be would be gold or even platinum these pure metals that allow for the transduction of electricity and that's health that's the health of the cell okay we'll get back to about okay so buying the water okay so in particular I recommend buying it in glass or getting if you're going to have to buy your water because you can't clean your own water up if you have, let's say, a, uh, a well, 
um, yeah, why go back and forth and you know clean the water? If you're if you don't have enough money to do it, I understand it. But the long goal is just to fix your water. So the water is the thing that you do the most. So getting some sort of house filtration system. There's lots of different types of even ones that build in structuring things into it as well. Um, they're great because it's a way of making sure that this little thing that you don't think much of it is super, super powerful. And so water can be um, really, really powerful. And like that's distilled water. So distilled water has zero um, minerals in it and it's mineral hungry. And if you run distilled water through copper pipes or whatever, eventually it will tear the pipes apart, even the plastic pipes, because it's grabbing onto stuff. And so the theory has been that people should not drink um, copper, or I'm sorry, um, distilled water very much, even though it's for sale and you can buy it. And they say, well, that's what you put in, let's say, your, your ironing or, or, or other machines because it will create these different um, mineral deposits. Well, so if a person has kidney stones or gall stones or those arthritis, those, like have excess um, calcium in their joints or cataracts, um, that's excess calcium inside the, the eye, in the ear, a lot of tinnitus type of thing is excess calcium. Um, and again, we can even talk about like people that have high level of, of um, some of the worst cardiovascular things, the heart disease or the heart attacks are really is because the veins fill up with this plaque that then fills up with this calcium and you become hardened on the inside. So one of the things about, and this is all what's called deposition, it's deposits. You know, when we're talking about a geologist, you become deposits. You're creating your own stalactites and stalagmites and stuff inside your body. So, you know, is there something to do to erode that? Like, I want to get rid of that. And so, yes, drinking the distilled water, if you have those conditions, for a period of time, maybe, let's say, if a person was prone to kidney stones, for, let's say, a good year, but then back off of it after, or let's say three months or something like that, but then back off on it because, again, once it start, you feel better and it starts to get rid of those deposits, you don't want it to do it too much. So then you get back onto, let's say, spring water or a treated water like reverse osmosis or distilled water or whatever. Um, and that's that's probably the, the autopilot water that people should be drinking is low mineral water, okay? Now we get into high mineral water, and this will be, let's say, the bottled water. Like, I like this really good, like the Pellegrino or the Perrier or um, the German one, the Grolsteiner. I know I'm not saying it right. My German people will correct me. There's a Polish one. I can't Sabwawa or something like that. I don't know. That one's real, and that one's even really salty. But the mineral waters are these fizzy waters, or and there are many different springs, artisanal springs that are bubbling out of the water or out of the ground that taste, that are fizzy, that are like, you know, Willy Wonka. It's like fizzy pop growing out of the water. Some of them are sweet, and you can taste the minerals that are sweet, lots of magnesium and stuff like that. So these are these kind of medicine waters. Now, you get people that drink that all the time, and they can be another person that is doing just like too, too many minerals in their, in their um, well water. Drinking mineral water too much for some people, if that's your go-to and all you drink, um, then you could put, be putting it yourself at a risk of these deposits, of deposition of this, um, like I said, um, arthritis, uh, kidney stones, gallstones. Um, okay, so on that level, uh, how should we ever drink? Yeah, uh, mineral water has a place too. And I, I think in a person's life is just, you know, like the 80-20 split. A good example would be you know, 80 percent low minerals good water that you drink and bathe in and then uh and wash in and all this other stuff and then uh and cooking oh again that's true you know like people forget well i'm gonna make pasta yeah i'm just boiling the pasta in the sink water well i've tasted pasta that tastes like you know you can taste the the fluoride and stuff like that so really ideally is is what goes into your body and don't forget about the boiling in soups and what you add into foods um, you're it's like you're drinking it. So that should be the highest level of water what goes into your body. Um, there's a this big world in terms of what's called alkaline um, water. And people get into, well, is there ever a time, you know, I heard alkaline is better for your body. And so I drink the alkaline water all the time. Alkaline is, is there's the pH, which is middle pH is seven. And then we get all the way up to like like 14. And so acid and base is on one side or the other. And acid is the, the lower one. Okay, so, um, uh, you know, 
the whole idea is, is well, we know a lot of conditions like cancer and other stuff. It's it, it's an acidic condition, so it makes sense to drink um, alkaline water, right? No, it, it doesn't, because where's that water you're drinking going into? It's going into your stomach, and your stomach is an acidic environment, and um, it's supposed to be acidic in environment, right? And what you're doing is you're lowering the pH in there. A am I saying there's ever a time? Possibly it is. Possibly there's a time for alkaline water, but I, I actually think it's not, you don't want to force it to be too alkaline. There's a better way to naturally change the pH and instead of forcing it to be more acid or base, um, you bring the natural things in, but that kind of do it on their own. Salt will do that. Okay, adding a pinch of salt into your water. Again, if you got distilled water and you want to change it, and, or RO water and you want to make it so it's not pulling so it's clean, but it's not pulling so much out of your water, add a little bit of pinch of like some sea salt or Celtic salt or, you know, into a good healthy sea salt into your water. And that will then structure the water better and make the water happy on its own so it doesn't have to have the potential of taking anything out of you. And when you look at the molecular structure of, of water, so let's say plain water, it has these the H2O molecule, kind of looks like Mickey Mouse. You have just plain water, but see within wa all water, unless it's distilled, there's other little things that are tacked onto it. And um, so what happens this is we found that if on the molecular basis, if you take a, especially a really good sea salt, like a Mediterranean sea salt or the pink salt or something like that, and you add it in the water, especially like a distilled water or uh, a spring water, what the water molecule will do is it will then grab onto the, um, the salt water molecule, the salt molecule, and what it does is it builds like this six-bodied hexagonal shape. It looks like a spaceship. And what it does is the salt surrounds the water molecule, one particular water molecule. So now it becomes this new type of ship. Now the interesting thing is, is that when it comes to your cells, whether it be a muscle cell or this, if it's plain water, because see that water has to go inside, everything has to pass through the membrane. We do our own RO water. We are an RO water machine. We am RO, <laughs> which means every cell is a reverse osmosis, which is it's designed to have a screening method of you can, like it's the bouncer, okay? Now, when the cell gets unhealthy and dehydrated, what happens is the cell, when a water molecule comes to that by it naked and alone, for some reason, it doesn't get into the cell. The cell says, nope, I'm already got too much water or not enough water or blah, blah, blah. And so it can actually act backwards on itself. And that's where we get into osmosis and, and, and concentration and stuff like that. So that's why salt, what it does is it actually comes in, there's a charge distribution of where the, 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 the cell says, I want the salt. And so it brings the water in with it, kind of like a Trojan horse. And so salt is the thing that makes the difference between, and the right amount of salt, too little salt, water can't get in. Too much salt, there's too much salt or water that's inside the membrane, and it comes like that, that you know, the girl that, um, Willy Wonka, that ate the blueberry, just a wall, and it's like, that's where you then get people having too much water in their body. And I'll get later in, uh, in where the question is, is, is there ever too much water? Can people drink too much? Yes, they can. Okay, so, um, uh, yeah, so again, the alkaline water is, it's got to go through a, an acid place to, so it gets robbed of its, and again, it's not the right way to do the alkaline of the body. If you understand the chemistry, the best way to actually alkalize the tissues, the body, is to actually add more acid to the stomach. So that's the lemon water, that's the, um, you can also add let's called humic and fulvic acids. Shilajit is another thing that you can add into water, okay, in order to make the water, satisfy, feed the water. You feed the water and then the water is able to feed you. And one of the reasons why actually, so again, the acidic things, that's where we also get into some other things that are other than the water, like apple cider vinegar. So again, I remember being a kid, a lot of kids remember be drinking the pickle juice. Why did we sit there and drink the pickle juice? It's because it was this brine salt and we needed the salt. And then if you remember, you drank the pickle juice and then you got thirsty and then you drank the water. 
The reason the pickle juices is because your body was telling you your thirst button is turned off. Can there be where a person is dehydrated and it's just because I'm just not thirsty? Yes, but it's like you would think that the system would say, go get water, stupid. No, there's a weird thing in the neurology of where it turns it off. And so really thirsty, actually, it turns off your, th maybe it's just like, I'm not going to get it anyway, so don't hope for it. And water can be right in front of a dehydrated person's body and, and they're not thirsty. So the salt, again, the pickle juice, then turns the thirst on and then you go, mm, yeah, like we're eating the Dorito or the, the potato chip, the salty things, is stimulates people to become thirsty. But it's, again, it's the salt of when the salt gets into the membrane, now the membrane or the cell itself becomes hungry for the water and thirsty for the water. So um, getting acids into it, but again, the pickle juice is acidic too. So, and that settles the acidic thing. So the stomach should be highly acidic and, and healthy at acidic uh, uh, basis. So even taking the hydrochloric acid can make the body then go, oh, that's right, my tissues are now becoming alkaline. So when a people's, person's hydrochloric acid goes too low in their stomach, then what happens is, is then it switches, okay? And so likewise, if you're trying to alkalize the body, what you really need to do is acidify the stomach um, and then drink the water. Okay, so there are things that you can add to water. Uh, we can add um, a little bit of hydrogen peroxide and that makes, or O3. So there's oxygenators or, or you can add oxygen, you can add nitrogen. There's nitrogen gas things that get put into water. Um, there already is in hydrogen and you don't wanna add more hydrogen, that's explosive, but O3. So there's ozonators, there's these bubbler things that, excuse me, literally puts three molecules of oxygen into your water which is, that's good, you want more oxygen in your cells. But I will warn people that uh, the ozonators or the ozone gel or the ozone water, it the, there's three and oxygen is O2. So there's, you know, it's the third man in the crowd or it's, and then it, what happens is, is your body breaks it off and now we have what's called a singlet of oxygen. And it, that's not good for a body. That's what's called a free radical and that's oxidation. So unpaired oxygen molecules, one on its own without a chaperone, without a partner, becomes very, very destructive. And so um, the more of the O3 that we have, even in dental procedures, I highly recommend that people bump up their, their um, antioxidants, resveratrol, uh, their DHA, um, CoQ10, uh, PQQ, um, uh, there's all kinds of different what's called antioxidants. There's a whole astaxanthin, I mean, deltanol, there's just a triad of things, uh, glutathione, NAC, these things, um, uh, uh, what is it, turmeric, I mean, just the, the curcuminoids, there's just a billion different ways to go of adding, adding grains and stuff like that to make sure I have these antioxidants into the, my system because what an antioxidant will do is antioxidant. And what's the bad oxygen? A singlet of oxygen. And so what it does is it grabs onto it because a singlet of oxygen is like the Tasmanian devil. Is blah, 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 and it starts tearing things up. And literally, if you see yourself on a micro level, that's what aging and damage is, is this blah, 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 thing goes off and you're literally being bombarded. And like I said, like, you know, like Spock inside the radioactive machine and it's tearing you apart from the inside. So that's why antioxidants are so important. That's why live living food, people changing their diet. Um, but we're talking about water. And again, you boil your food in the water, you drink the water, so what should I do with water? Um, bentonite clay, the Mediclay. Bentonite is one of these, um, again, it's a, a like a dirt. But what it does is put that in the water or even put that in your water filter, that's part of, and it will just kind of sit there and it becomes an attractant. And what it does is it grabs onto things that might be stray inside of the water, petrochemicals, um, microplastics and stuff like that, that it's just so small you can't see it. But the charge potential or the charge on the bentonite clay, or there's, you can do what's called C60, carbon C60. You can find these things. That's why some people put like a little bit of, um, uh, what is it? Not she legit, but um, well, I'll think it. Fullerenes, uh, I think, um, shungite. So there's some filters that actually have shungite built in them because shungite is this one of this different 
um, geological thing, but it has high levels of what's called C60. It's carbon that's made into these 60 nanotubes, and it essentially is just like a living computer cleaner thing. And um, charcoal, so we can actually be, have people like, again, when they make whiskey and stuff like that, they put it in charcoal barrels. There are some people that literally put, like, you can put water into, like in the old timey days, is just watching the hateful eight you know and this is back in after the civil war and they're like go get some water the spring water and he lifted up and it was like the big pickle you know barrel but it was a you know a wooden barrel that he just was taking water out and it was just the water that they had gotten from the stream okay or the water from the that they pumped up for the well um uh, but it goes through charcoal and so charcoal again people too you can even put bits of activated charcoal into the bottom of let's say a water vessel and it will literally grab onto stuff um now we get into what's really probably the best water in the world the best water you could probably drink is an artisanal swing a uh, spring water meaning an artisanal well is it, it doesn't have to be pumped up from the ground it's like you know the beverly hill it's up the beverly hillbillies like up from below is you know it's bubbling out of the ground and the now if you have an artisanal well i remember as a kid it's one of my best memories is with my father and we were out in the back 40 up in in um, uh, northern michigan this was actually in hemingway country this is when he wrote about hunting with his grandfather as that that what I, that was the this was the woods that i was in and we in the winter time we used to go snowmobiling through these woods and i would sit on the little sled that my dad would pull us and there would be times where we would get to a certain section and my dad would say okay everybody get out and we would drink like the deer right from the spring because it was so clean now those as it goes through other stuff like it starts to pick up on the you know, animal feces and stuff like that so the best cleanest water in the world is you find an artisanal spring spring and you find right where it's bubbling out so right where it's coming out of the rock you can literally harvest it now if you want to be a stickler about it there's some water testing that you can do and you can test it for you know even just like a microscope looking for the different you know living organisms but what will happen is is where it's bubbling out of the rock the first place before it goes down if you catch it from right there there's nothing that's growing in it and it's super super clean because it's been filtering from the earth and it's um, and then what you can do is with that water you can just bottle it up in glass bottles and you know if you go up north there are certain up here in Michigan or northern Michigan there are places where it's literally a spigot and, you, and it's coming right out of the rock and People stop by there and fill their water bottle. Instead of going to the grocery store and filling up their RO water, they're going out and getting healthy spring water. Or people that are camping where you can go to a nice healthy lake, yes, yeah, so, you know, it may have boats and stuff, and pass it through, let's say, a Berkey filter or let's say good lake water that you just put on the, on the stove and boil it, and then you can put it in the refrigerator. That's good living water, great water. Now, you can take that great living water and do even more to it, which is, again, like I said, you can take this, the best of the best would be straight artisanal water right from the source, and then by putting it in, let's say, a, a gold um, lined or a silver lined or a gold a chalice, or even putting, let's say, people can take, uh, you can put gold, like for instance, a gold coin, a solid gold coin into a vessel of water. So it would either be glass or, um, you know, and this sounds extreme for some people, but if you really want to be in the know, which is how do I make the best water in the world, you pass it through these different types of things. You can even put things like, for instance, um, granite. Um, so some of the best granite and make sure you're cleaning this stuff. How do you clean these rocks and stones? You clean them and not with chemicals. You clean them with water, straight water. You even kind of rub them with some salt and salt water and then you boil them and you make sure like they are, are, have been sterilized. And so you can sterilize the rocks. You can sterilize your, for instance, gems. Some people like things like amethyst and stuff like that. I don't really, I think that, uh, truth be told, it would be, like I said, um, sh um, shungite. Is something that you can put in this vessel of water um, uh, no plastic don't let plastic touch it um, some people talk what you can do metal but uh, you know like the stainless steel but ideally it would be let's say uh, and, and again like I said the gold or the silver or all this or copper so there's some they make these water bottles that are actually copper lined or solid copper 
And what it does is it turns this water into, let's say, a medicine water, where it's actually not only putting the, the metals, uh, little micro metals in there, which kills all the bad stuff, but it also is what, you know, you need copper in your cells. Um, and then you get onto a next level of which is, I'll remind you of this doctor, Dr. Um, uh, Hashimoto, I can't think of him, he's this Japanese doctor, but he's dead now, but he did, uh, Masaru Emoto, and what he did is, is it's messages in water, and water holds memory, and if you'll look in that book, he took a bunch of pictures of taking droplets of water or vapors of water and then freezing them in a special machine that made them grow into a snowflake. So a snowflake is not because it's coming down and it's the atmosphere, you know, that makes it turn into whatever shape or snowflake. It, a snowflake is water that's invisible in vapor that then, like the panes on the glass, like if you see frost grow on the glass, it grows into that shape. And what it's growing into is a fractalized, frozen, planar structure of what vi what water is vibrating at, what it's, what's called cymatic pattern is. And that's a frequency. And so, for instance, a frequency, so if you were to take water, okay, take a bowl of water and then uh, you basically hum at it and go boo, and if you knew which tone it was, what you'll see is you'll see on the surface of the water, the water will not, will, it's not your breath that's making the waves, it's the tone that's making the waves. And you'll see as you change tones going from an A to a C to an F to an F sharp and what's called the, the hertz in terms of like sort of 440 or 528, this is the waves going up and down, what it makes water do is become this shape. Mm -hmm. So it shows what sh what the, is the shape of the water, okay? So frozen water, uh, what he would do is he would take and he would do everything to speak to it, think to it, write on it, put pictures on it, and the hateful bad things, it wouldn't make a beautiful crystallized shape of like a snowflake. It made this kind of bastardized type of glob. Or, or it would be, let's say, it wanted to be a snowflake that looked pretty, but it was like a Frankenstein. Okay, but then he took that same water and did, let's say, happy things or, uh, you know, these different positive things. And now the water would then freeze into a beautiful structure. And even when he would take, for instance, and anyone could do this, if you had the equipment or you just have a freezer, you know, you can do this, um, is take the water and again, he would put pictures and let's say, for instance, a picture of a cathedral here in America or a picture of this Japanese uh, temple or something like that and tape a picture on it or write the name on of it and what you would do is you would see the water and like you know on these cathedrals they'll have like for instance what the stained glass looks like and that's a cymatic pattern and what it would do is it would look almost exactly like that almost exactly or Christmas tree a picture of a Christmas tree and the so it was like the water was listening the water was remembering. It does, it does. And so what you can do is take water, especially really highly clean water, like I talked about, source water that you can just take alone or source water that you do some other things to it and put intentions into it. Just like, you know, prayer, which is you say a prayer over food, thanking the creator for giving this food. That's energy that you're doing to it. And you're putting good energy into it. It's essentially that you're not praying to the water. You're not worshiping the water. What you do is being thankful and you're taking the opportunity to go, I will wipe my mind clean of anything negative and I'll look at this water or whatever. And it's like, I love you or I love me, or you can even put your, for instance, your own name into it, think it in your head or, or whatever. And what that's doing is it's putting, there's a lot of different things that you can structure water with, but again, it holds memory. So what memory do you want it to hold? You want it to hold a good memory. And there's other things that we can do in terms of homeopathics. So homeopathics is this whole other level of different types of, um, it's a medicine, um, but what it involves is it's similar to what you would think of as like a vaccination, which is you give yourself a little bit of the poison, not enough to make you sick, but enough of a poison so that your body will build up that reaction to it without having it. So like in, in homeopathics, one of the names is what's called Apis Malefica. Apis Malefica means bee venom. And what they literally do is they take 
bees and bee venom and they harvest it and then they dry it out and then they crush it and then they distill it and distill it with pure water and uh, let's say grain alcohol and so the whole process of making homeopathics is instead of giving you this much of the actual poison what they keep doing is diluting it diluting it diluting it. and in the homeopathic world the smaller it is the more powerful it is and so apis mellifica is bee venom and what it is is if you get stung by a bee you're going to get rashes and hives and stuff like that so if you get start getting rashes and hives or these type of conditions without being stung by a bee you take a homeopathic dose of apis mellifica Malefica, and what it does is it builds up what's called the titers. It builds up the response. And so what it does is it's an early warning sign to marshal your forces of health and healing in your body. Well, homeopathics, you can take pure water and put homeopathics into it. You can literally put it in by tapping it. So taking water and tapping it. And so one of the things that, that my wife has taught me how to do, and, and she learned it from people, is taking, let's say, water, or even because you are the pure water too. So think about it. You're a distiller. So you have purified water in yourself. And so you can literally become the water container. And so, for instance, she learned, like, for instance, now in the homeopathic world, there's different dilutions and like, What's called 6X is one of kind of the, it's a kind of catch all. There's higher concentrations or dilutions or whatever you call it. It goes into C and M and everything, but 6X is a general kind of cover all. So, like for instance, certain, if you want to protect yourself against certain kinds of, let's say, influenza A. So, what she taught me is just like basically you think it in your head and she'll do this on me. Sounds crazy to people, but she'll we'll be laying in bed next to her and I feel her tapping me. And I just feel her finger kind of tapping. And what she's doing is in her mind, she's literally tapping in her mind going, influenza A, 6X, influenza A, 6X. Or we can do, let's say, uh, if we ever drive by, let's say, a place where they're, they're spraying the, the grass and you can smell the chemicals, that's, that's um, DDT. Or it is, uh, I forget the other one. But she'll be in her mind and when you smell it, you start doing that in your head or even with your voice and you kind of say, let's say DDT 6X, DDT 6X, or you say, like for instance, um, COVID-19, COVID-19 6X, COVID-19 6X, and you do it for about a minute or so. And what happens is, is that's you're creating a homeopathic inside your body. Hold on one second. I think we're here. So anyways, that's what you can do with water. And I went from basic level all up to like say expert high master level. And again, you are the water, but you know, when you get people on the lower ends of the way, uh, uh, ends of the rung, they've, you know, they really have, they didn't get their water right in their head. They can be toxic from their water and you got to clean yourself out from your water because the water can leave these really bad deposits. Um, I don't know what the time is, but I, let me say, I'm going to do two other things, okay, that I wanted to do it. And that is, is there ever uh, a time where um, people can drink too much? This thing that's what's called excess thirst, like you are too thirsty and you're, again, you drink and you, it just, it doesn't satisfy your thirst. It's a condition that's called, if it's really bad, it's what's called polydipsia. Polydipsia is what's called excess thirst. One of the top things that causes that is diabetes. So if you're thirsty all the time and you're drinking all the time and peeing all the time and it still doesn't satisfy, be concerned about diabetes. There, um, medications can do this, uh, like water pills can do this. People are on a diuretic and the doctor puts you on a diuretic and you've just never stopped. That can cause this excess thirst. Cortical uh, steroids, some drugs that are steroids can cause this excess thirst and excess drinking. Another thing that can cause, this is the big gulp people. You know the people, and again, these great big fat people that, and I'm sorry, I'm not trying to be offensive, but I'm talking about just people as they are. People that are very big and heavy and they drink, and you tell them, are you sure you're drinking your water? And they do, and they drink lots of water. They'll go through like two or three big gulps, and it's not just because they're big people. That's too much water or too much iced tea or too much pop or whatever it is. And literally some of their obesity is water weight and it's not just all fat. They're ballooned up because they've held on to too much water. And those people that have drank too much water with too little salt and not taking, like salt's bad, right? If they don't take enough salt, what will happen is, is then, again, you become overinflated and you become too hydrated, overhydrated. 
high, uh, too much water is a condition which called hyponatremia. Hyponatremia meaning it's too much water. Again, when a person is like running on, let's say, a, um, uh, a marathon and they keep taking the water, if you take the water too much without the Gatorade or without the salt pills or something like that, what will happen is you'll, because you're sweating the salt out, and if you sweat too much salt out, then your brain doesn't work, and that's where I cause like too much water, too little salt and too much water, or too little minerals in the body becomes what's I call glitchy computer, glitch, glitchy screen, which is <sighs> you start glitching. And what are these glitching things? Um, headaches. So people that have chronic headaches, and again, the suspicious thing is, oh, I just take my Advil, or I just take my, my pills, and it, or I have migraines, it makes it go away. I've told people over the years, many times, the first thing about a migraine is you've got a dry brain. Your brain is like a raisin, and it's pulling away from your skull, and that's what's causing, so it's shrinking inside your head. Um, not enough salt causes it not to absorb the water, even if you drink it. Um, feelings of dizziness or disorientation can be a sign of like, it's not your thyroid or it's not this, is you're just drinking too much water. You've diluted too much water and not enough salt, okay? Muscle cramps and spasms. We always used to say like, for instance, oh, just do magnesium or do potassium, eat the banana. Sometimes it's too much water. These big gulp people that go, I got these cramps. And so uh, again, too much water and too much tea and coffee and all this other stuff can do it. On the deep, deep level, which is some of the worst thing, is the seizures. So we're looking for these extreme measures that we got to take the drugs for the seizure. But sometimes it can be this water thing, not having the water thing right. And so uh, water is very, very important. So hopefully today you learned about all of the different levels of water. And part of a level of health is not just about eating better and thinking better and more exercise and your supplements, but it's also about leveling up on water. And everybody can get healthier. It's a guarantee. Everyone will get better if you find a way to level up on water. Clean it and make it better until ultimately you will be able to have this source water and it's like they like living waters or like they talked about like in you know the the florida whatever it's just the it's the it's the, the well of life but it's right in front of all of us it's just good good clean water and you got to find it you got to get it and once you get it like you guard it with your life but uh it, it's a guarantee it's good air good water is that's what the body requires and the, the more that you do that for the water you take care of the water the water will take care of you okay so Till next time, this is Jason Eagle, your Natural Health Authority. Bye-bye.